Well, I hope you enjoyed the grapes as it is now and seeing it as it was. And on to the next part of our tour. We're in Narrow Street, London E14. Over here, there's a bit of the history of Narrow Street. This here statue is the Herring Gold, 1994, by Jane Aykroyd. But that is not the history. The history is here. Docklands Heritage, Narrow Street. The lime kilns, about the year 1560. And that's where Limehouse gets its name from. Uh, here is a pocket history of the, the area, basically. You can have a little read of this one. Pause to read. Over here is Rope Maker's Field. And we'll see the history of that too. There's a few little Georgian properties in the area, including the grapes and the houses next door to it. And this is another one of them. It's left on its own now, with the modern beside it, but a lovely house nonetheless. I won't show you too much of it here because it is a child's playground, but um, this is Rope Maker's Field. It's pointing this way because, as I say, there's a playground over there. Rope Maker's Fields, 1994. Another pocket history of that. And that is Rope Maker's Field. Back up a minute, there's a rotunda thing. And back over to where we was. So I'll pause you a second and get you back to where we were. And here we are, and back off we go. And we're looking down narrow street towards Canary Wharf. And, but we're going the opposite way today. I will cover the other bits and areas because there's a lot of history in this local area. Let's get me out of the road before I get killed. One last look at the grapes before we go. And we are on our merry way. Once this lorry's gone, I think I need to cross over because there's something, something nice I want to show you. Can't get into it, but just the beginning bit is nice enough. So as I say, we're walking down Narrow Street, London E14. You can see a lot of modern here. But there is historical amongst it as well. And this street is really one of the oldest or the oldest street in Limehouse of the Georgian era. Blythe's Wolf. And this is what I wanted to show you over here. Water garden. We can't get in there, but just this is nice enough on its own. It's lovely. Water runs down both sides there. And obviously, you've got to have some kind of passcode to get in there, but. It runs all through there in the middle and such like. Not for the high polloi. But yeah, it's lovely. Very nice. And off we go.
and over here the building that we're looking at there is our first original old piece of architecture but it's been reutilized into the modern day world which is what I, I like that and it's pepper mill wolf that side yeah you've got shoulder of mutton alley which is very modern but these places would have been little narrow alleys and courts filled with warehouses and whatnot back in those days pepper mill wolf there apartment flats or studio flats now it's pointing you up a minute because someone's coming along yes. riverside store we'll be coming up to uh, something fairly interesting soon when I get you to the end of Narrow Street, which isn't a long walk, and it wasn't always this wide, it was even narrower than this back in the old days. The old lock keepers' cottages, this isn't the really interesting thing, although it's lovely enough. This is one of the locks, but uh, oh, it smells of sewage as well. Albert Muse, probably named for Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's consort. And I'm going to have to go out this way a minute because coming along. Sorry if I have to uh, cross over and move about a bit. Victoria Wolf, and this looks modern. It's going to pause you a sec, and off we go. Northeast Street, London E14, and there's now coming, so I will cross us over because here is where Thames meets Limehouse Basin. It's now called Limehouse Marina. All poshed up. That's the old London as it go. But that's um, Limehouse Basin bit. It's called Limehouse Marina now. Limehouse Waterside and Marina. How posh. Yeah. And over there is the Thames. Where Thames meets building that we're looking at now is the Gordon Ramsay Bread Street Kitchen on the River. That's another view over there. Different world to work once was. Food smells nice from here, I must admit the Gordon Ramsay Bread Street kitchen on the river, but wouldn't be my kind of place. Pointing this way a minute because some uh, people are coming along. There we go.
we are almost coming to our next historical location. No cars coming along this way. Let's get out of the road. It's crazy to think that this once was narrower, even narrower than it is. Over here is something called the Mosaic, which is a big water fountain that currently is empty. So I checked that one out already. Not much worth seeing there. Back in the area, probably, hopefully, when it's um, operational again. I'm going to cross you over the road because we're coming up to our next set of historical buildings. That's what we're looking at here. These were once part of the old wharves and warehouses that lined the Thames before the big docks came along. Like the Royal Victoria docks, the Albert docks and things like that. You had a lot of warehouses along the Thames like this. And the Pool of London was a ridiculously busy place. Ridiculously busy. Sun Wolf this is called. And you can still see it's got one of its cranes up there. Uh, it's now coming along at the moment. And we'll be at our location in a minute. Which is good. These have um, been converted into little studio flats and apartments, which is nice. It's, uh, I'd rather they do this with an old building than pull it down and put some characterless new build up. I mean, the newer buildings around here have been built nice enough to try and keep them in keeping with uh, what's around it but you're never gonna be able to replicate exactly the old because it needs to grow old to be that so Spurt Street certainly not it's entirely inappropriate This lot's all new, but uh, this is the old stuff all there, as if we just went past. Let's get out of the road. And we're coming up to our last location of this tour. guys and girls you have seen narrow street as it is now and now you're gonna see it as it was so off into the past we go and here we are I've chosen my two favorite images for narrow street uh, this is narrow street late Victorian era and as you can see it getting even narrower as it goes off in the distance as I said in the uh, in the video it was much narrower than it is now so hence its name uh, a little window into the past of the local area I love old photos like this and here we see it in the early 20th century we saw it late Victorian period in the last photo this is early 20th century um, possibly going into the late teens maybe early 1920s we judge that by the um, shortness of the woman's skirt absolutely depraved you can see almost all of her legs that photo could have been seen by respectable married women or young children but there we are anyway I love photos like this as well because this shows narrow street in its original purpose it was lined with warehouses and wharves and docks and factories and things like that and you see one of the old walkways going across the street which is now gone but as I say these little windows into the past give us a view of how things were we've seen it as it is now and you see you did these two uh, images from my favorite ones you've seen it as it was so I hope you enjoyed that and on to the next part of our tour which is our last historical location I hope you will enjoy that little venture into the past and now for our last location which doesn't look very much today I must I must admit I will grant you 
we are at Ratcliffe Cross Stairs. And this pipe reeks here as well. And this, my little pretty chickity choose, is one of the oldest uh, river crossings on the Thames. Goes back to medieval times, this does. Certainly smells medieval too. Bear these little views in mind. Because that's going to be our last venture into the past. If this is over 35 minutes, it'll have to be a YouTube jobby and shared on uh, Facebook, from YouTube to Facebook, because every time I uh, go over 35 minutes, it mutes me at about 35 minutes and so many seconds long, which is somewhat irritating. good view right down the river here the tide is just going out it's the shard there that you can see looking down towards Westminster and that way we'll take you round past Canary Wharf and Greenwich and the O2 Arena to Woolwich and Barking and our last little venture into the past these what look like fairly modern steps because they are modern concrete steps but this little bit here has not changed for a very very long time it's one of the oldest crossing points over the river before buses and our trains and modern ways of transport in London came about the easiest way was to get up and down the river or across the river by boat and this would be where you would come and catch one of those boats so back off into the past for our last little venture there and I hope you all enjoyed this one take care As you can see with Ratcliffe Cross Stairs, several famous events took place, historical events. Um, Admiral Sir Hugh Willoughby embarked from this point on the 10th of May 1553 on a voyage from which he was destined never to return. He set off with three ships fitted at Deptford of size 160, 120 and 90 tonnes. He led the first English expedition to leave London in search of the North East and North West Passages. He was hoping to reach Cathay, the old name of China, by the North East Passage. On board were the two brothers, Stephen and William Burrow. Willoughby and two of his ships were lost, but his second in command, Richard Chancellor, reached Archangel and pressed on further to Moscow on sledges. Once there, Chancellor met Tsar Ivan the Terrible and on his return to England negotiated for a trading agreement which opened the way for the establishment in 1555 of the Muscovy Company. Due to the cold climate in Russia, it offered an outlet for woolen goods. The famous explorer Martin Frobisher sailed from Ratcliffe Cross Stairs to seek the Northwest Passage to China. He tried passages three times in 1575, 77 and 1578. And here is Admiral Sir Hugh Willoughby and his ill-fated voyage. You can see Narrow Street in this 1795 map of Ratcliffe at the bottom right, right by the river uh, with the old slipway and steps that led down. This image from the First World War shows a young man with his child at Ratcliffe Cross Stairs with the old slipway still in place. Credit to www.postcardfinder.co.uk a public domain image, Ratcliffe Cross Stairs, Shadwell, River Thames, 1926, old antique vintage print, art picture prints of London. And our last but most recent image is Ratcliffe Cross Stairs, oil on canvas, 1958. I couldn't find the artist's name, but um, credit to www.mutualart.com. And that ends us with our little historical tour, ladies and gents. I hope you all enjoyed that and found it interesting. Thanks very much for watching.